Hey, I'm Evan from Race Tech Electric, and I'm going to show you our Yamaha Banshee uh, DC conversion kit. It comes with a stator and a regulator. The stator is good for 200 watts. Uh, it'll let you charge uh, a pretty decent sized battery. You can use HIDs, uh, LEDs, any type of lighting you want with pretty massive output. So you can run just about anything on the DC side of your Banshee with this kit. Um, come on over here and I'll show you what we got. You will need our stator uh, that comes in the kit. It's our part number G870. Uh, this is our Banshee stator. Comes complete with pickup coil and original connector. These are your lighting uh, charging outputs. Ready to go, plug and play. You will have to reuse uh, your backing plate from your original stator. We don't make them with the backing plate. You also uh, have our R600 regulator, uh, and it's a rectifier as well, so this will let you um, charge your battery. Uh, it can ha easily handle up to about 300 watts, so 200 uh, watts out of the Banshee stator size perfectly for this. So this is your kit. Um, you'll also get a wiring harness uh, to allow you to make your connections to the battery. Uh, that'll be real simple. I don't have that here with the parts yet, but we'll show you how to install it later. Um, other than that, to do this installation, you are going to need a flywheel puller. You have to get the flywheel off on the Banshee, and I really wouldn't try and do it with anything except the right puller. So they're not too expensive. You can get them on eBay or you know plenty of places on the web. So that's our kit. Uh, over here, here's the bike we're going to be starting with. Um, it's a Banshee 350. It's in nice shape, running a stock stator and a couple AC headlights right now. So. This is what we're going to start with. Uh, we're going to get started by pulling the side case and getting the flywheel off. So we'll get the bolts loosened and show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, so we're going to get the side case off so we can get to the flywheel. Um, to do that, we need to remove the peg or uh, footboard and the shift lever. So I've already undone these. Now I don't know if these are stock or not. Um, these foot pegs are obviously aftermarket. The bolts may or may not be. These are 14 millimeters. The, you need to remove the bolt for the shift lever. That's a 12. I think this is stock, but I'm not really sure. <clears throat> you never know on older bikes. So remove that. Then obviously these aren't, <laughs> aren't stock, but you need to remove the four bolts here on the back of the cover. Okay, and we need to remove the longer chain screws to hold the front. And everything's the same length, so no need to mark it on here. Then you can just slide this off. And it's nice, this being a two-stroke, the case is, uh, stator covers dry, side case is plastic if it's original, so it all comes off real easily. <clears throat> all right, now we're dealing with uh, getting the flywheel off. So pretty simple. Number one, you need to get the nut off. And the easiest way to do that is with an impact wrench. And uh, it looks like a 14 millimeter, but I'll let you know in just a second. And you can uh, use an impact wrench to blast it off. Comes off real simply with one of those. If you don't have one, you can put the transmission in gear, like third, second, third gear, something like that, and hold the brakes down. And then uh, you can twist against it. Usually that'll lock up the engine enough and hold it in place to allow you to do this by hand. After that, we're going to get the flywheel puller on, and you just screw it into the threads inside the flywheel, and then tighten up the inner part of the uh, puller, and it'll press the flywheel right off. Make sure you use a flywheel puller, the right one. Don't try and do it without. You'll end up damaging the flywheel. So I'm going to go ahead and get the nut off, and then I'll show you uh, how to use the flywheel puller. Okay, now I've got my impact wrench. Uh, the nut on the end of the flywheel is a 17 millimeter, so I'm going to get that on there. That's it, blast it right off. Now I'm going to get my flywheel puller on. Just line it up. And it's reverse threaded, so you twist to the left. <clears throat> Tighten it up until you can turn the flywheel yourself a little bit. Then thread in the center until it's tight, so now you're hitting the end of the crankshaft. Now we're going to use an impact wrench and push it forward and it'll pop the flywheel right off.
That's it. Now our flywheel's off. And First we're going to go unplug the uh, stator connector before we do that. So you can just trace it up. Uh, here we're running back up to the other side of the bike. So I'm going to get that connector and unplug it. And then we're going to pull the backing plate off. And then I'll show you how to swap the stator. Okay, so as you can see, we went ahead and pulled off the tail plastics of the bike. Um, you should probably go ahead and do this. You could do it without, but it's easier to get to everything. And it's really only about six... Uh, six bolts so not a big deal um, so we went ahead and pulled the rear plastics I'm just showing you where the stator connector is it tails up here to the uh, back right side of the bike so obviously this is an older model uh, Banshee this is an 87 I believe so it has the older connector the stator we make is only for the newer Banshees I believe 97 to 06 or so I'll confirm with uh, the exact fitments later but <clears throat> it's only for the second generation Banshees um, I'm converting this older bike, so don't worry that the connector is different. Um, but anyways, it should be in the same place on the newer Banshees. Go ahead and unplug your stator connections there. You should have one plug and then two bullet connectors. Go ahead and undo those. And then just kind of feed it back uh, over towards the stator side because you're going to need to be able to pull that out later. So now it's loose and ready to go. We're going to go around to the other side of the bike. Okay, now, like I said, we're going to be swapping the new stator onto the old backing plate. So, while the stator's still tight, go ahead and loosen the mounting bolts. So you have three bolts for the stator. This one's kind of corroded, but I got the bolts out all right. Just make sure you put a lot of pressure in on your screwdriver, push really hard in so you don't strip it, and then give it a lot of torque, and it, they'll pop loose. So, anyways, you want to go ahead and undo these. Actually, you know what? I just realized we'll uh, we'll take it off on the bench. I just want you to loosen them right now while you have it fixed in place. So go ahead and pop all three of those loose. You also want to loosen your two mounts for the pickup coil. So now that we have all that loose, it's easier to do with it fixed down rather than loose on the bench. Okay, then you want to undo the backing plate. Backing plate mounts with three bolts. You got one down here, one here, one here. They're all ten. Okay. Now off the back and now we've got our stator loose and you're just going to go ahead and pull the connector back out pull out the wiring harness then we'll take the whole thing to the bench and swap the stators over okay now we're going to go ahead and pull the stator off the backing plate we've already loosened all the mounting bolts for the stator and the pulser coil so i pulled them almost all the way out i'm just going to remove them now the stator will pop up off the plate remove the mounts for the pulser coil Okay, now we're going to go ahead and mount our stator uh, onto the original backing plate. So go ahead and <clears throat> line it up. Uh, the hole spacing is different in one direction, so it will only line up on the plate one particular way. Um, go ahead and make sure you use some red Loctite, always. Uh, and it's not pretty and can be expensive, so save yourself the trouble. Use plenty of red Loctite when you mount the stator. So go ahead and tighten those up. We'll come back and torque them in just a minute. Now go ahead and you're going to need to route your wires matching the original. Uh, since I'm actually converting an older model, I'm going to do that in a minute. Then go ahead and mount your pulser coil. This isn't quite as critical, but I always use Loctite on it as well. So now that i got that done, you're going to go ahead and route your wires and make sure to use the clamp down below underneath that holds it in place. Put your clamps back in. Uh, well, one, you removed, you're not going to use the other one. Make sure you put your one clamp back to hold the pulser coil wires in place. And that's about it. Once you got that done, we'll go ahead and get the stator back in the bike. All right, so now that we have our stator mounted on the backing plate, ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and feed the... Wiring harness and through. Go ahead and get your stator lined up correctly. Okay, then you need to get your grommet in place, which is usually easier to do with a screwdriver. Now you want to be careful not push too hard, but 
You can use a screwdriver to pry the edges of the grommet into place. Usually the easiest way to do it. There we go. And it'll pop right in. So, now we're about lined up, ready to put the mounting bolts back in. Now, make sure you use Loctite on these as well, just like the other mounting bolts. You really don't want to risk uh, one of these coming loose. And then go ahead and put in all three of your mounting bolts and tighten them up, and then we'll get the flywheel back on. Okay, now that the stator's tight, mounted, you need to go ahead and put the woodruff key back in. If it fell out, it's a little half moon shaped key. Fits into a slot in the okay, crankshaft. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall our flywheel. So make sure you check where the notch is inside and then make sure you okay, line so it up. Okay, we've got our crankshaft lined up and pressed on a little bit. Going to use an impact wrench and tighten up the nut. You don't need to hit it too hard, but a couple turns to make sure it's fully seated. And you want to make sure that there's no interference. The pickup coil can be slid back and forth just a little bit. You want to make sure it lines up right with the ridges on the flywheel, this guy. And that the magnet on the pickup coil is centered on them when it slides by. So that looks perfect. That'll tell you that the flywheel is seated all the way. Then spin it by hand a little bit. Make sure you don't hear any grinding, any interference. Everything sounds good. So we're ready to plug it in and fire the bike. Okay, so we got the stator installed, wiring harness routed. Uh, I went ahead and installed our regulator rectifier unit right here. We had an empty uh, hole on a bracket on the frame here. Now, we don't specify where to mount this because there's lots of different ways to do it. Everybody's banshee is different, and these things are so heavily customized in the aftermarket that we're not going to tell you where to mount the regulator rectifier or your battery. You can set that up in just about any way you want. Um, if you do have this bracket open, it's a nice place to put it. It's real simple, it's out of the way, and your connectors, nothing has to be modified. The length is perfect to get everything plugged in back here. It also works well with some of the aftermarket uh, battery mount kits that people are making, which lets you mount right here underneath the seat uh, and in the back of the bike. So it's a nice setup for that. Now uh, we're going to go ahead and plug it in. So we got our stator connector. Now again, I modified this to work with an older model, so for our plug-and-play stator, you won't need to change anything. You'll just plug it straight in like this. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the connector. Then I have our two AC output wires from the stator. Now, these can plug these plug in straight to the rectifier to the two yellow wires, and it does not matter which is which. This is a single-phase AC system to charge the battery, and either wire can go to either wire. So, plug those in, slide the plastic cover up and over it. Now we have connected our rectifier. And we will have charging current out to a battery coming out these black and uh, red-white wires. The original two lighting wires on the bike will not be used anymore. They're now effectively dead, so you can just tape them up to the harness. So now, you run uh, your output, the black and the red will go to your battery. Black is ground, red is positive 12 volts. And wherever you end up mounting your battery, we include a long length of harness with bullet connectors and then ring terminals on the other end. So you can route it and put your battery anywhere you'd like, up to the wires long enough to put it up to the front of the bike or uh, back here. So that's up to you, and then you can drive all your accessories off of the battery, you can switch them to your headlight switch, you can do just about anything you want. But the whole point of our kit is a low-cost battery charging uh, kit. 200 watts of power, you can easily charge your battery uh, on a Banshee. So now let's go around to the other side. And let's finish up our stator installation. I'm going to put the stator cover back on. Line it up with the shifter shaft, slide it over, and then start putting your mounting bolts back in. Okay, and then tighten all those up. 
Then you're going to mount your shift lever. And then you're going to mount your foot peg again and you're all set. That's the installation of our kit. That'll get you set up to charge a battery with 200 watts of power on your Banshee. Um, you can call us for help and more information. We're at 619-928-9015 and www.racetechelectric.com. Thanks a lot.